My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues my feet from the snare. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome, friends, to the third Sunday of Lent. Scruff Muffin here. I hope that your uh, Lenten sacrifices have been going well, and this has been sort of a season of renewal, and maybe discipline, maybe a little bit of uh, spiritual growth for you. So this third Sunday of Lent, the readings that we get tend to focus on two things. They focus on desert, dryness, and water. And I've, I, as I was reading these readings, I found it very interesting. God brings life out of lifelessness. We see this in the first reading from Exodus, where we see the, the Israelites, they're wandering in the desert. They've just been freed from the slavery of Egypt. But they don't have any water. They're lacking food. They're tired. They're hungry. They're feeling pretty miserable, honestly. They even asked Moses, you know, why did you take us out of this slavery in Egypt so that we could die out here in the desert with our children and our livestock? And Moses turns to God and asks him, what do you want me to do with this people? They're going to stone me if it goes much longer without water. And God responds by telling him to go over to the rock, strike the rock, and there would be water that would pour out. I mean, first of all, that's an insane command. Why would we ever think that water would come out of a rock? But this is, this is what God repeatedly does. He brings life out of this lifelessness. And in the same way, in the Gospel reading, we hear the story of the woman at the well, where Jesus offers this woman living water. It brings life out of lifelessness. So what's going on there? Both of these are kind of taking place in a desert. I mean, it's obviously Samaria is kind of in the Middle East area. It's very hot, very dry. And Exodus, they're obviously in the desert. It's very hot. It's very dry. So what is the desert? The desert is usually like a place of trial in the Bible. It's usually presented as a place of distance from God or trials in the spiritual life, dryness in the spiritual life. It's a place of, of uh, hardship almost. And what we're facing in these readings today is stories of how God brings water and life to his people through that desert. And in Lent, we're kind of called to go into the desert as well. So it's this time of trial, sure, but it's also a place where distractions are removed. Because in the desert, there's, there are no, you know, there's no iPhone in the desert. There's no, because of the hardships, there's no happy good times in the desert. You know, it's, it's a hard place. And when we remove those trials and those, or when we remove those distractions, rather, we face those trials head on. What do we find there? Do we find this place of trial and temptation, that's it, just kind of this despair, and we go out there and we die with our children and our livestock? No, no. What we, what we find is what we're actually seeking for. We're seeking this life in the middle of this lifelessness. When we pull back from kind of the world and kind of the promises that the world offers us, what we find is this thirst, not only for, for water, but for living water. It's a real thirst for God. What we're looking for is this authentic spiritual life where we're called to relationship with Jesus. And when we call out to him, like the woman at the well, we ask, uh, give me this living water always. When we allow ourselves to be in the desert, when we allow ourselves to pull back from the distractions and kind of face what we're, what we're up against in life. Maybe in the spiritual life, maybe it's pride or maybe it's gluttony or maybe it's uh, laziness, lust, anything, whatever it is. We go there and when we ask the Lord for, for water, he gives us not only water, what we, what we think we want, but living water, even beyond what we want, this living water that brings us into real relationship with him. And it's a great promise that we have in that living water. 
It's even explicitly stated in the second reading. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into the hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at his appointed time for the ungodly. It's an amazing gift in that respect to understand, kind of come into that relationship with this God who loves us so much. You know, St. Jose Maria Escriva, one of my favorite saints, wrote in one of his books called The Forge. He wrote about the love of God and about the crucifixion. He said that Jesus is bound to the wood of the cross more by his love for us than by the nails themselves. And I just think of that as we go out into this desert of Lent and as we progress through and we call out to Jesus, we're thirsty. Well, what are we thirsty for? Well, we need to get rid of the distractions in our lives and we need to understand what the cause of that thirst is. And we also need to be confident that Jesus will be there. He knows everything. He knew of the sins of the Sumerian woman. He knew of the difficulties in her life. And he knew how to help her and to bring the Sumerians back into the fold. He knows everything. And he's not afraid of it. He's not afraid to come out to the well and speak to us, even when we're afraid to speak to him. He's not afraid of our sinfulness. He knows it. And he wants to help us through it. And it's this relationship of love, this relentless pursuit this relentless search for water on our part, but this relentless search to give us water on God's part. This living water that he wants to give us to call us into communion with him. So as we move forward in Lent, take some time to consider the difficulties in our lives, the things that are holding us back, the distractions that we might be facing, whatever sins that we might be confronted with on a daily basis. And remember that hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us as a free gift and as a call from God directly to us, each and every one of us, that he loves us and that he longs to have communion with us, that he longs to be in relationship with us, and that he will give us the living water. All we need to do is ask for it. God bless, friends.